Hey guys, today we're going to learn all about Gantt charts in Pinkcell. We'll cover off things like adding activities, adding milestones, covering off dependencies using anchors, adding a responsibilities column, adding a remarks column, and much, much more. So if that sounds good, let's jump into it. All right, so first thing we'll do is drop in a Gantt chart. So I'll click on insert, elements, and then Gantt slash timeline. And this is the default chart that uh, Thinksell drops into the slide. Now there's a few different parts to this chart that I'll quickly cover off. Down the left-hand side, we have activities. This is the activity column, and we have activity rows as well across the entire chart. This is an activity, this is a bar, and uh, across the top, we have um, the timeline. So let's start with dates. I'll double click on the timeline at the top and you can see a calendar pops up. And we can change the date range by dragging the anchor point to a new position. So I might just drag it to a random spot like this and click out of it. And you can see that the timeline has changed. Now the other thing we can do is we can left click here and we can change the scales and the separators. So at the moment we have months and weeks um, but we can add in things like days, years, or quarters as well. There is one thing I can see here that I would like to change, and that is these weeks here are the week of the year. So this is the 31st week of the year, 32nd week of the year. People don't really think that way. Um, they tend to think of the date that the week starts. So I'm going to click here and change this WW. I'm going to change it to DD, which means date. And there we go. And now we're ready to add activities in. So the first activity, I'll just click on the label and type it in. And the second. Now this second activity is actually a child of the higher level activity called launch plan. So I'm going to hold alt shift and press right. And that's demoted it to be a child activity. Now it's time to add one more activity in. So I'm going to right click and hit this button, which says insert row, or we could hit control alt and down. And from here, I'll add in the rest of my activities. And now we're done. So the next thing we can do is add our activity bars in. Now I'm not going to add activity bars for the high level parent activities. I'll just add them in for the child activities. So the first thing is I can drag this bar down to the right row and I'll resize it by dragging the anchor point. Here we have a dashed line and that dashed line represents kind of a tentative activity. Uh, I will use that later. So I'm going to leave that in here for now. To add a new activity, I'll uh, right click and hit the button that says new bar. The other way to add a new activity, which is a little bit faster, is hold control and then just drag your activity to a new line. And finally, I'll drag the tentative activity down to the right position. One thing I'll mention uh, is you can add labels to these bars. So I'll right click on the bar and hit add date label. And you can click on the label and change the format. So there's a, a bunch of predefined formats, but also if you do know the, uh, the format off by heart, you can add in your own. And of course, as always, you can add in some custom text uh, to the label too by typing it directly in. In my case, I'm not gonna use labels, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. Now let's add milestones in. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom row, right click and hit insert row. Uh, it's automatically inserted a child element because the one directly above it is a child element. So I'm gonna click on that, hit uh, Alt Shift Left, which makes it a parent. And then I'm gonna right click again and press add row separator. And now we have a, uh, a separator line here I'll rename that to milestones. 
And now we're good to drop in the milestones. So first one I'll drop in will be here and right click, add new milestone. And I'm gonna call this milestone uh, launch plan finalized. And then here I'll add a second milestone, which I'll call comms plan finalized. Then finally at the uh, very end, I'm gonna add a milestone pilot finished. And I'll drag that all the way to the end. Like other elements, you can select the milestone and change the color using the drop down menu. And the other thing you can do is you can change the shape. All right. So uh, it's common in timelines and Gantt charts like this to have dependencies, which means to have activities that require a different activity to be finished before they start. We can actually build that into our Gantt chart. So let's assume that our draft comms plan needs our launch plan to be finalized before it starts. You can kind of see that already because the, uh, the activity bar starts when the launch plan bar ends. But to make sure that we always abide by that rule, I'm going to click on the bar and this anchor point, I'm going to drag to the end, to the kind of final anchor point for the finalized launch plan bar, hit uh, let go. And now you can see there's an anchor there. That means that if I change the bar length, so I change the dates, they automatically stay in sync. All right, so now there's a few additional columns we can add into the uh, Gantt chart. So I'm gonna right click in the activity column and hit the button that says add responsible label column. Here we now have a, a new column where we can type in the name or the team name of who's responsible. So let's do that now. Cool. You can see here though that John is responsible for two different activities that are kind of back to back. And instead of having John's name there twice, we can do something a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna delete the second label. And then I'm gonna click on John's name. And on the left-hand side, you can see there's two circles. It says span one row, but if you click on the bottom one and drag it down, it now says span two rows. And you can see that we've now grouped those two activities and John's responsible for both of them. Finally, we'll add in a remarks column. So I'm gonna right click here and uh, hit the button that says add remark label column. And this column, we can do a few things. We can add some text in, or we can either add Harvey balls or check boxes. So I right click on the box and I can now basically pick between the different options. In this case, I'm just gonna switch them all to check boxes. You can also multi-select them by holding control and then adding checkboxes on mass. And similarly, we can multi-select and then change the checkbox to blank. Cool, so that's the kind of substance done. Now I'm just gonna uh, slightly format the chart so it's a bit easier to read. I mean, the one observation I have at the moment is that the timeline itself is quite uh, it's quite short and the responsible and remark columns are quite large. Also the text looks a little bit big. So let's, uh, let's make some changes to make the Gantt chart easier to read. And I often like to change the, uh, the vertical line to say today, as opposed to the date, or in fact, we could do both. So that's it guys, that's everything you need to know about building Gantt charts or timelines in ThinkSell. If you found that useful, we have a few other videos on Gantt charts that you can check out. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment box down below. That was useful.